Eric Darling here with Darling Data, uh, and, you know, recording another video about SP Who is Active, one of my favorites. Uh, I'm a proud maintainer on the repo, even though there's not a ton of action there. I do, do enjoy uh, laying down the law over there. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I don't, I don't, I don't do too much laying down of the law uh there's a there's a sheriff for that uh i'm just a just a deputy pew 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 anyway uh in this video i'm going to talk about a couple ways to use sp who is active to focus on specific issues that you might see and uh get more information about them now, uh, you'll notice that for uh, the, the many of the demos that I use in Whois Active, I limit the output column list just to what I want to focus on. Uh, I find this to be a very useful tactic uh, because by default, you kind of get a lot of columns back. And especially if you uh, need to capture screenshots or something uh, about what's going on on a server, it's a lot easier to limit the columns and kind of get everything focused in without a, without having to scroll and get multiple screenshots or something. Um, I know that there are all sorts of savvy ways that you can use screenshot software to scroll within a window, but you know, for me, the more I, the, the, the less I have to do, the better. <laughs> Code first, as they say. So, um, uh, I'm going to show you two scenarios that I use SP who is active for quite a bit and uh, the parameters that I use to um, to get more information and the list of columns that I tend to focus on. All right. Video's over. Bye. I'm just kidding. Stick around. It'll be fun. All right. So the first one is TempDB. So, of course, running this without um, anything going on, you know, um, there's really not anything using tempdb here uh tempdb allocations and current are both zero for for uh my cdc job doing things now uh one one thing that i want to point out is that for both of these i am implementing the sort order parameter and using that to find things doing the most of something all right so this sort order parameter is really useful by default SP who is active just shows you kind of what's been running the longest, but there are all sorts of scenarios where you might want to find things by some other most, <laughs> right? Because sometimes uh, SQL servers mosting is leasting or something. That made sense, right? Min-maxing, whatever they call it. Greatest and leasting. All right. Anyway, uh, let's uh, kick off a workload that is going to do specifically just a bunch of crap in TempDB. I forgot a semicolon there, shame on me. Uh, so this is just going to select the top 10,000 rows from badges into a temp table. Uh, it's going to do that a whole bunch. There's a helicopter going by. If you can hear it, um, sorry. Uh, I do not control all the helicopter activity in New York City. <coughs> so that's my fault. Anyway. Uh, let's kick this off and let's beat up TempTB a little bit and let's run this and let's see what happens. All right, so we got this and I don't think we really need this to keep running. That's not really going to do anything useful for us. I don't know why I can't click on this now. That's interesting. SQL query stress, where are you? Okay, well, apparently, apparently that's just going to keep going. So uh, let's kill that the, the old fashioned way, maybe. No? All right. Cool, whatever. Well, you've really let me down there, SQL query stress. Really let me down. Maybe if we just hover over here, we can see how much progress it's made. Oh, well, it's still going, isn't it? Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, as they say, uh, SQL query stress giveth and SQL query stress taketh away. So I guess we can give this another run. See what see what's happening here, but uh, scroll over a little bit, and uh, none of these are going to use a particularly large amount of TempDB. We're only dumping like ten thousand rows into a temp table, 
but we can see a decent amount of uh, stress on TempDB. Now, you can uh, accuse me of shenanigans here, but uh, you know I do. Uh, I do have a the I do have eight TempDB data files to match the eight cores that are assigned to this virtual machine, and I do have uh, the uh, in-memory TempDB feature enabled here. So uh, I'm not I'm not me just messing with. SQL Server, we still are hitting TempDB contention, but just not a ton of it. Right? There's a like, nine, ten milliseconds. It's not like you know, not like in in the past when you had misconfigured TempDB and you know, um, before 2016 when trace flags 1117 and 1118 uh, became the default behavior, um, and you know you didn't have the in-memory TempDB system tables where this could, this could drag on for many milliseconds, but um, now we just have, uh, you know, pretty minimal TempDB contention. Uh, no, so, uh, you know, thanks for, um, thanks for finally showing up. <laughs> thanks for finally finishing. Groovy. Gro groove, groove is in the heart. Cool. So that this is that's this is the, the, the setup that I use if I'm troubleshooting uh, contention in TempDB. Uh, I use the sort order uh, TempDB current descending, uh, and for the output column list, I use uh, well I get sort of like the normal stuff. And then one thing that I think is really cool about SP Who is Active is that uh, you can put the list of columns that you want, but if you put um, wildcards on you know we can put the one on the beginning the end both sides uh then it will get back all of the columns that uh that are related to uh tempdb so that's that's one thing that i find really useful here is uh the wild card so i don't have to remember the name of every single column that touches tempdb i can just say temp uh percent for for like the the you know the wild card search and get all of them back so pretty cool there the next one that I want to show you, and, uh, that's why I have these columns on a new line, because my big head gets in the way of some of these over here. Uh, I'm going to do something sort of different, but sort of the same. Mm -hmm. That's why these things kind of group together. One of these things is a bit like the other. So for this, I'm going to find block leaders. And when, I when you use find block leaders, that gives you a column called block session count. And I'm going to order by blocked session count descending so I can find which query or queries are at the top of a blocking chain. Uh, I'm also going to get a little bit of, adi of additional information here so that the additional information column gets populated with all of the most useful things. Now, uh, there is a parameter for SP who is active called get underscore locks. And that can be okay sometimes. But what get locks does is it populates an XML column, like an XML clickable column with all sorts of lock information. And on servers where there are a lot of locks going on, that can be really, really, really slow. And that's kind of why the additional information column is useful because you don't need to enumerate all those locks in the same way that the get locks parameter does. So that's why I have that instead of get, that's why I have this set up instead of using get locks because I just don't want to deal with many, many locks. So if I run this now, uh, the only thing going on is, again, my, my pesky CDC job. <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't think, well, we just don't need to get into that, do we? I don't think so, probably. Probably not too interesting to get into that. But uh, what I'm going to do is come over to this window. I'm going to begin a transaction to update the comments table. And then I'll, I'll roll it back later. But really, I just need the transaction open like this. So that when I go and I run this query, which is going to try and query the comments table, uh, all these queries will get stuck. So I'll uh, give this a couple runs. That's probably good enough. And uh, yeah, so we can cancel this. That uh, Amazingly, that worked. And I'm going to uh, roll this back, and I'll deal with the, the rebuild over there uh, in a moment. Uh, the reason for the rebuild is because I am updating an Envarkar column where uh, to something 
where you know it, like it just shouldn't be happening i don't want to it can just cause it just causes weird stuff with other demos so i have that out there but the important stuff that we get back the uh the sql text the query plan which can be really really useful for troubleshooting blocking problems uh over in the wait info column uh we have uh information about the queries that are blocked waiting on lock weights. Now, there's no wait info for that top query, right? If we look over here, this top query has no wait info associated with it. And that's because remember, queries doing the blocking do not emit lock weights unless they're being blocked. But in this case, this query is just free to go off and do whatever it wants, and it is and it is causing the blocking, so other queries are wait, waiting to get locking weights to do their thing. Now, I am under the default isolation level for SQL Server, which is read committed, which is garbage, and I don't recommend it, but it is good for the purpose of this demo. So thanks for being good for one thing, read committed. Now, uh, you can see the blocked session count column. Uh, this top query here has the most blocked session. Remember, we're ordered by this descending, and so it's going to look a little bit funny to see this CDC column show up in there, but it's not, remember, this is just an await for. And since this has, the, these bottom uh, bottom four queries are not blocking anyone, the, the sort by zero just kind of puts them in whatever order, right? Like, like non-deterministic sort. But we have the blocked session count. Uh, we have the queries that are doing, well, this top query is blocked right here. And then uh, it says this one here has three queries behind it which uh, is, is technically true, I guess, but, uh, but, but looks a little bit funny since it's, it's a select, right? But really it's just because this one is blocked by this one. So uh, blocked session ID 66, or blocking session ID 66, that's this top one, 65, this, the, that's the second one. And so this one, this, this top query is blocking all four of these, but this bottom query is blocking three of the other selects, technically speaking. Now I told uh, I made a big stink about that additional info column, so we might as well click on that. Now for the query doing the blocking, it's not going to look all that interesting here. Uh, the command type, because it's a modification that finished and was waiting to roll back or commit, the command type just says awaiting command, but if this were in flight, it would say update. Uh, we get some useful stuff back, like the SQL handle, uh, which is good if you want to go track down an execution plan for this at some later point. Uh, you get the, uh, the ANSI settings for the query. So if uh, you're using some weird setting, you might be able to fix that uh, in the application or whatever over here. Um, you know, there are also, there are the uh, ANSI, the required ANSI settings in SQL Server to do all sorts of stuff like uh, match index views, filtered indexes, computed columns, which break if you're not using the right settings here. Uh, and uh, you also get the isolation level, which in this case is the steaming pile of garbage known as read committed. Uh, where things get a little bit more interesting are for the queries that are blocked. Uh, because that will give you this separate section of XML uh, called block info. And block info will tell you the lock type that uh, is, is, we're, we're waiting to be released, uh, the database, uh, object ID, object schema, object name of the thing that we are trying to get access to. And... Uh, that's good because then we can figure out, um, you know, if it wasn't obvious from uh, I, from either the the query doing the blocking or the query that is being blocked, we can get uh, information about exactly where this thing is jammed up. Now again, you can get a lot more detailed information using the get locks parameter, but when there's a lot of blocking going on, that can be really really terribly slow. But uh, the additional info column for all of the other three blocked queries will show just about the same thing. Uh, we'll see, you know, the information about the database here. Uh, I don't know. That's about, that's about it. Anyway, uh, so this is a couple ways that I use SP Who is Active to troubleshoot specific scenarios on servers. There are all sorts of other ways you can do this. There are all sorts of things that you can do to uh, get more customized uh, output from 
who is active. We're going to talk about filtering uh, results in the next video, but this is a pretty good uh, illustration of how I use SP who is active to um, to filter out to sort and thing or to uh, troubleshoot specific scenarios. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something, uh, and I do hope that you will watch future videos of mine, and that you will like and subscribe to my channel. That you are feeling sleepy, very sleepy. You will find yourself clicking the like and subscribe button. And um, yeah, that's 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 that for me. That's it. I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm tired. So tired. So ever loving tired. Anyway, thanks for watching.